This is Dr. Caudill Miller, the brain doctor, and we're going to talk about benign intracranial hypertension today. Another name for this is pseudotumor cerebri. And this is when you're making too much spinal fluid in your brain more than you can actually excrete out of your brain. Uh, the brain and spinal cord has about 100 cc's of spinal fluid, and it's made by the cord plexus, it's just made too fast to get rid of it. It's absorbed through these little grapevines we call arachnoid granulations and they're just making too much, and it causes pressure, causes headaches, and causes blurred vision. We see it mainly in obese people, in people with high salt diets. We see it much greater than women than in men, and, and much greater in the South, where I live, in African American women. We see it with some medications that are not ones we use very often, vitamin A, which you're not even supposed to take. Tetracycline can cause it. You know, a lot of the dermatologists still use it for acne. Nalodixic acid, which I've never used. Um, some birth control pills, but usually the older ones with high dose estrogens. Um, so symptoms are headache, and it's worse with coughing or sneezing. Uh, they have blurred vision, vision loss, can go blind from this. This is the biggest concern. They'll often have tinnitus uh, ringing in their ears, and often a heartbeat in their ears, like they just hear this beat in their ears. Very dizzy, can be show, have shoulder pain. Um, if it gets really bad, you know, they get a sick nerve palsy, you know, and uh, so... This one of the eyes is crooked, rare third or fourth nerve palsy, so they'll have double vision. Um, when we look in the eye, we look through the, the cornea and we see swelling behind the eye, what we call papilledema. Uh, the MRI brain is generally normal, but you can, you can see empty cella syndrome with the pituitary and there's so much pressure, the pituitary glands flattened against the floor of the brain and the cella tersica. And uh, the ventricle is gonna be very small, but the brain is generally normal. Um, a lumbar puncture is the only way to really check the pressure. Um, anything over 220 to 250 is abnormal. Most people, it's over 300. Sometimes it'll spew out of the top of the manometer over 550. Um, if you don't treat this, they're going to go blind. It's just a matter of time. We do blood work, take a CBC chem profile, pregnancy tests. We see this in pregnancy. A rheumatological screen, ANA factor, B12, cortisol, ACE level for sarcoid. The treatment is a Two gram sodium diet, you, if people be rigid on two gram sodium diet, that might be all you'll need. But we use Lasix, Dimox, and Potassium. Um, the Dimox inhibits the enzyme uh, carbonic anhydrase and, you know, it reduces CNS production, you know, up to 50%. So we really like to use Dimox. Some people can't tolerate it, but you try to just start them on a low dose, you know, 250 milligrams to 500 BID to TID, so I usually begin, you know, 500 twice a day. Um, use Lasix um, temporarily. Make sure you use potassium because Lasix will spill potassium and get their weight off. Um, sometimes Topamax will work, and uh, we use Topamax. And try to avoid medicines that gain weight. This two-gram sodium diet is critical. There's some doctors who think that's all you need to do is get that salt down. A very bland, terrible diet, and if they start losing their vision. In the old days, we always put in VP shunts and then started doing, you know, uh, optic sheath decompressions, and now they're back to doing VP shunts. I've just had horrible experiences with them because they almost always clot off. So if you can find a neuro-ophthalmologist, you know, either in Miami or in Birmingham, that will do an optic sheath decompression, decompression that's the way to go. So, and sometimes these patients have to have bariatric surgery to lose weight. So pseudotumor cerebral is a real problem. It's often missed. Make sure you can do a good ophthalmological examination. So anybody with headaches, has any blurred vision or dizzy, if you can't see their optic disc, send them to the eye doctor and let them dilate their eyes and look at their optic, um, their optic nerves. Um, you know, I found limited number of healthcare providers can even see the optic discs. So you know, practice with this and try to learn how to do it, particularly if you're a nurse practitioner or PA and you're not really supervised very well. You're stuck out there on your own. Make sure you know how to do this. And if not, and you don't want to do it or you don't have an ophthalmoscope, um, I can't tell you how many clinics I go into that I don't see any ophthalmoscope. I don't, I don't hardly see them anywhere. And the reason is they're so expensive and they break all the time and nobody's buying them anymore. So that's okay. Just punt them to the eye doctor, an ophthalmologist or optometrist, and uh, make sure they don't have this because they'll come in one day I had a lady one time, 33 years old, treated her for two years. She didn't do anything I asked her to do, ever. Two young babies, she went blind in her right eye, and on the way to UAB to get optic sheet decompression, went blind in her left eye. 
I mean, I'd yelled and screamed out her, beat her, her husband beat her. We all tried to just get her to mind a little bit, and she never did. It's horrible. I mean, my nurse is tough as nails. Cried, I cried. It was just terrible. So this is a serious thing. And but I don't have patients that are compliant that don't get well. So take this seriously. Someone with headaches and dizziness. If you can't see their optic discs, you know, have them see an eye doctor. So that's pseudotumor cerebral or benign intracranial hypertension. Uh, like, subscribe uh, to my channel, make comments, send me a message, uh, more later.